Now the question is that this bill be now read a second time, and I call the honourable member for Fisher. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on this legislation with a, a mix of relief uh, and some frustration. I'm relieved that this Labor government has finally legislated what the coalition, what the leader of the opposition, what myself, what the member for Flinders have been fighting over for a very long time. And I include also the member for Banks, the shadow opposition, uh, the shadow communications minister. I'm relieved on behalf of the desperate parents who have called for the government to step up on this issue. But I'm frustrated it's taken so long. I'm frustrated with the lack of conviction from this government, and I'm frustrated with the way that ill-informed proponents are seeking to conflate this legislation with other issues such as parents' rights and privacy, which are, of course, very important. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, the member for Flinders and I, uh, among with others, have just concluded an historic inquiry into social media through the Joint Select Committee on Social Media and Australian Society. Over the course of almost a year, the committee heard testimony from over 200 families, experts, some so-called experts, and victim survivors the majority of whom support age assurance as one tool to help keep kids safe online. The fact is that children should not be required to keep themselves safe on platforms that are inherently dangerous and for which they lack the developmental capacity to navigate safely. We know that parents are the best judges of how their, children's should be raised, uh, their children should be raised. But what parents told us throughout the course of the inquiry is that they are at a loss as to what to do and how to navigate their, their parenting through this journey. And it is plain to see from the evidence provided to the committee that big tech cannot be trusted to self-regulate in the interests of Australian users, particularly Australian children. The eSafety Commissioner said harder-edged regulation is what's necessary. I don't know that there's anyone that can credibly say self-regulation has worked. Reset Tech Australia warned that harm happens as governments wait for self-regulation and co-regulation to fail. The simple fact of the matter is that what we have been doing is not working. We need change and we needed change and we needed it yesterday. Now, those that would say that the status quo should continue are either living in a delusion or they are complicit. Research highlighted in the Roadmap for Age Verification showed that nearly half, nearly half of all 16 to 18 year olds had first encountered pornography before the age of 16. Over a third of them through social media feeds, ads, messages and group chats. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, this is not the pornography of yesteryear. This is hard core, violent, misogynistic pornography, which is impacting upon what young people consider uh, what constitutes a normal sexual relationship. Early exposure to pornography can significantly harm a young person's sexual development and their mental health. Yet in a public hearing on the 28th of June 2024, TikTok representative Mrs Woods Joyce claimed that there's no, TikTok, there's no pornography on TikTok. On the same day, Ms Antigone uh, Davis appeared on behalf of Meta as its vice president and global head of safety. And she said, we don't have pornography on our site. So let me just correct that statement. It's not just pornography either. Pedophiles, predators, criminal gangs are using social media to sexually exploit and abuse, young, and abuse young Australians. 
especially our young boys. In the 22-23 financial year, the ACE, the Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation, received over 40,000 40, reports of child sexual exploitation. The AFP charged 186 offenders with 925 child exploitation-related offences. In the first six months of 2024 alone, the ACE received 560 reports of uh, sextortion. These are just the reported cases. What about the thousands of cases where young men, young Australians and families were too embarrassed to report them to authorities? The AFP shut down over 1,800 bank accounts linked to offshore organisation sextortion gangs. Evidence supplied to the committee named Meta, Snapchat, TikTok, WhatsApp, Skype, Discord, Telegram, Gchat, Roblox and so many other social media and digital platforms as facilitating abuse by predators. And when asked how many child sexual abuse material reports were made by Australian end users, platforms redirected their answers, proving adept at the politician's pivot. The obfuscation and opaque responses to questions from this parliament show that you cannot trust big tech to keep kids safe from sexual harm. At the same time, the use of algorithms is driving mental and physical ill health. These social media companies advertise alcohol and vapes with targeted advertising. They exacerbate eating disorders and body image issues through fitspo and fad diets. They market gambling products, promote radicalisation and extremism and facilitate foreign interference and anti-Semitism. We heard from the parents of eating disorder survivors and victims. We heard from recovered alcoholics and the loved ones of those who simply drank themselves to death. And we heard from our intelligence agencies about the role of social media in amplifying and enabling foreign interference and social discord. And heartbreakingly, Mr Deputy Speaker, we heard from the loved ones of those young Australians who took their own lives as a result of cyberbullying. We heard from Ali Halkic, whose son Alam tragically took his life after relentless cyberbullying by an adult perpetrator. Mr Halkic felt that he had known, had he known more about the online danger his son was facing, he would have behaved differently in how he allowed his son access to a phone and to social media. We heard from the brave mum, Emma Mason, whose daughter, Tilly Rosewarn, took her own life at just 15 years of age, following a relentless campaign of bullying which catast catastrophically escalated on social media. I spoke about Tilly during the course of the inquiry into social media, highlighting her case as an example of avoidable harm. And we heard, we've all heard the story of Dolly Everett. After a chilling and tormenting campaign of cyberbullying and physical violence, this promising 14-year-old student, who had the world at her feet, tragically took her own life. Dolly's brave parents, Tick and Kate, have since worked hard through the Do It For Dolly initiative to raise awareness around cyberbullying. After Dolly's death, I convened a meeting of the Digi Group, the peak body for these online platforms, and I left that meeting feeling like I'd just met with Big Tobacco last century. The platforms have consistently refused to acknowledge their role in the harm perpetrated against young Australians. I promised then that I would be a thorn in their side. Since then, I've pushed for age assurance, restrictions, transparency and liability for these big tech companies. Australians can depend on one thing, and that is that the Leader of the Opposition, that this opposition, 
the shadow communications minister, me, the leader, the, uh, the member for Flinders, and members on this side of the house will hold big tech to account. The question many have asked is, will age assurance fix these problems? Mr Deputy Speaker, be under no illusion. Australians should be under no illusion. There is no silver bullet. There is no panacea. Keeping kids safe online will require a multi-pronged approach. However, we know that age restrictions and age assurance will slow down and deter some users who would otherwise have a free pass to inappropriate content and contact. There are elected parliamentarians, corporate shills, misinformed public spokespeople who continue to spout untruths about this issue. Let me remind Australians, just because you see something on social media, even from a trusted source, doesn't mean it's true. You have been misled by vested interests at the big end of town. Age assurance is not identity assurance. It is not new. It is not a tool for parents. It, it is, it, sorry, it is a tool for parents. It is not a substitute for parenting. When you prove your age to purchase alcohol, access a discount or enter an adult store, your data is not stored. You are age verified, not ID verified. But I want to send a huge shout out to the, to the member for banks, the shadow opposition minister for communications, who secured an, an incredibly important amendment to this bill, which means that any government cannot require under this bill, and nor can any social media platform under law require a user of a social media platform to provide digital ID or provide government ID in the form of a passport or a, or a driver's licence. That will be expressly uh, prohibited under this bill. And the, the, the member for banks should receive a huge bouquet for securing that exemption or that amendment to this bill. In her statement to the US Congress, Facebook whistleblower Frances Hagan said that social media companies want you to believe that the problems we're talking about are unsolvable. They want you to believe in false choices. They want you to believe you must choose between connecting with those you love online and your personal privacy. The age assurance trial should examine all options available to address privacy concerns and protect kids online. It is a balance which can be struck without Labor's dangerous digital ID proposals. And the member for Banks, who's just walked into the chamber, has done just that. He's secured that amendment and he should be applauded. Despite uh, the degree of self-interest from social media platforms that want us to think this is all too hard, from even mental health groups that have been uh, totally self-interested, receiving financial money from social media platforms that came into the social media inquiry and saying, all too hard, nothing to see here. Unbelievable that mental health groups who purport to look after the welfare of Australians could be bought with 50 pieces of silver. Absolute disgrace. Shame on you. Francis Hagan said, also said, when we realised tobacco companies were hiding the harms it caused, the government took action. When we figured out cars were safer with seatbelts, the government took action. We know the harm caused by social media companies as a facility for foreign interference, a platform for predators and as an amplifier for extremism and psychological distress. It is time for government to intervene because industry has proven to be complicit. 
complicit in perpetrating and perpetuating harm upon our most vulnerable. As Collective Shout put so well, we cannot allow large-scale reform to be scuttled by disagreements about the technical aspects. I congratulate the Shadow Minister. I congratulate the Leader of the Opposition for their leadership on this issue, and I commend the bill to the House. I thank the Honourable Member for Fisher. Authorised by Andrew Wallace, LNP, Boccarina, Queensland.